Let's disable the injector for cylinder one. Malfunction indicator lamp open, meaning on. Do you see it lit? I don't see it lit. You're not gonna believe what I found. It's a big surprise to me. G'day folks, it's DIY Guy 123 here, bringing you another do-it-yourself video. A friend of mine has this 2014 Hyundai Elantra and she said, hey, it's got a noisy exhaust. Would you take a look at it? Sure. Well, on the drive over here, I realized it's only running on somewhat less than 100% power. It's misfiring, but I was pretty worried because there was no check engine light lit up and that would mean that I'd have to use the live data and the sensors to try and figure it out because if the car's computer doesn't know that there's a problem, it might be really hard for me. Let's hook the scanner up and I'll show you what I found. Okay, so I went through a full system scan and was surprised to see there were actually codes set. And then I had ECM codes and airbag codes, voltage low on the batter, on the battery for the airbag codes. Well, whenever you see anything with a voltage low code, clear it. And if the code goes away, uh, generally it's because your battery was too low at one point. Well, I know this vehicle has been sitting for weeks waiting for the exhaust to be looked at. So I just guessed that the battery had been just drained down over time. And I cleared the codes, took it for a ride, and only two came back. Before I fix the exhaust system on this car, and I think it needs a fair amount of work, I want to make sure the engine was good because at a quarter million kilometers, if the engine's no good, you don't bother putting money into something else. Let's go into diagnosis and go into live data. And there are a couple of things I want to show you here. Malfunction indicator lamp open, meaning on. Do you see it lit? I don't see it lit. Why isn't the malfunction indicator on? Well, I don't know if this thing has light bulbs or LEDs, but it's either burnt out or somebody removed it, which I think is a real dirty thing to do when you're selling a vehicle. Okay, and where we also had a misfire on cylinder number four, I wanna look at the misfire data for cylinder number four specifically. So what I have here is total count of catalyst damaging misfiring of cylinder number four. What that means is, you know, a misfire that most likely sends raw fuel out the exhaust and that would cause the catalytic converter to have to work harder to process that raw fuel so i think they they're telling me that can damage the catalyst let's start it up and see what happens right away i want you to watch this catalyst damaging misfire creeping 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 cars idling really rough let's go into actuation test so with respect to those faults for cylinder four Let's do ourselves a favor and disable the injector for cylinder one. If I do this, it should cause the engine to idle even worse. And it very clearly did. Okay, let's try it. turn that off. Let's injector, let's disable injector two. Yeah, much worse. Let's disable injector three. Much worse. So disable injector four. Huh, when you disable injector four, it improves the idle. Okay, so I popped the engine cover and I've got a battery charger running to take care of the, dead, the low charge battery. Let's give you the good news. So do you remember beforehand we were getting misfires on cylinder number four and I had off camera, I changed the ignition coil out I swapped them between one and four because I didn't know which one was number four. So I just swapped the two opposite ends of the engine. And watch when we start it now. We're getting them on cylinder number one and not cylinder number four. So this is very clearly telling me that we have a bad ignition coil. Okay, so to pull out the ignition coil for cylinder number one, which is misfiring, there is the side of the engine that has the alternator and the oil intake right here. This is cylinder number one on this engine. One, two, three, four. So to get it out, there's a 10 millimeter bolt you need to release right there. And this connector needs to be released. Now to get this connector released, you first pull up on the gray tab, carefully like that. And then after that, you can push in with your thumb and release this. Now, these connectors get really fragile as a vehicle gets older. This one already has a broken connector right here. So let's take that out. <clears throat> we'll get the bolt out of there and then with a little twisting motion should come right up now with an ignition coil it's sometimes possible to see cracking and warping and stuff so i don't see that right now but anyway this guy is definitely bad 
Upon closer inspection, right above my thumb, there's this sort of burnt part right there. And that's in the high voltage side of the coil. I suspect that that is where the spark is leaving and not going through the spark plug. It's probably leaving here and going direct to the block. It's very charred, like, well, a little bit charred right there, but it doesn't take much. Anyway, so I think that's where this thing has failed. Okay, so here's our brand new coil direct from Hyundai. This is a factory original. And to my surprise, it was actually cheaper than the three aftermarket parts stores that I went to. So yay Hyundai on that. So let's get that new one installed. And our spark plug is down in the hole already, of course. We're just gonna drop that in place and put our 10 millimeter head bolt back in there. Super easy to change a coil. And that bolt needs to be snug, but not on there hard. And now you put your coil connector back in place and put this little tab down that keeps it from coming off. And let's cross our fingers and see what happens when we start this thing. I gotta re, okay. It's been so long since I've had the tool on that it wants to reestablish communication with the vehicle. All right, well, hang on. Do, 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 do. Okay, so if you recall before, originally we were having problems with cylinder number four misfiring. Then I switched the coils and the problem moved to cylinder one and stopped on cylinder four. And in either case, whenever the cylinder misfiring stopped incrementing, the CVVT state immediately went into limp mode. Let's see how it behaves this time, now that we have the new coil in cylinder one. Okay, so some good news, the misfires are gone. So this vehicle is running on all four cylinders again. That part is good, but the CVVT state of limp home is still there. Okay, um, well, not what I was hoping, but that's what it is. So let's reset the codes and see if we have any luck there. <laughs> 